The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN 906 AM Wednesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and quite a reversal from yesterday's action. Markets green to start things off. We're up a solid 57 points right now in the S&Ps, trading at 46.24. I got a daily chart up here just for some context of the run we've had. <clears throat> Excuse me. You back things up to basically the beginning of the year in the S&Ps. And you're talking about a price range of about 3,700. We're currently trading 923 points above that level. We're almost 100 points away from all-time highs this morning. You got the S&Ps up one and a quarter percent. NASDAQ 100 continuing to show strength. You got the NASDAQ 100 up 1.3 percent, up 211 points. Actually had Apple positive yesterday with everything else going on in the market. Dow Pulling back a bit, you got the Dow off almost 2,000 points off its highs, 34,783 Dow up about 9 tenths percent this morning, and the Russell continuing to be volatile. Quite the pullback. You're talking about 210 points from the highs of 2460. We're trading at 2250. You're back in the consolidation area that we were in for the better part of this year, starting in about February. This morning, though, the Russell up 2.4% at 2250. You have the Russell down, I think, 4.5% on Friday action after Thanksgiving, so the Russell particularly volatile. Bitcoin this morning, positive by about 500 bucks or 1% of 58,000. Jumping around the commodities, we got crude up a buck 67. Yes, trading at 67.86. I'm coming to you live from Isla Mirada, Florida, uh, on location this week. Speaking of crude, 67 bucks. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstad at 40 past the hour, as we do every Wednesday from forex-trading-unlock.com. We'll talk to Teddy for nine full minutes about the forex market. Maybe we'll get into some commodities as we usually do. Uh, interested to get his take on this crude market with a little bit of a pullback uh, since we talked to him last week. A lot's happened since last Wednesday in the markets, folks. We jumped down to keeping with commodities natural gas if i can find my cursor here natural gas continuing the pullback we're down to 441 you're down another 15 cents which is 337 and you look at the acceleration that we've gotten you back things up to just october folks and we were trading at 646 you're now under two dollars under that price level at 441 on natural gas we jumped down to the gold contract catching a bid up $13 after pulling back pretty harshly. Uh, and again, backing up to November 22nd, you had gold pushing 1850. We're trading at 1790 right now. And we jump to the all important notes and bonds. A uh, little bit of pullback of the action that we had yesterday. Quite the pop. You look where we were November 26th. You got the 10 year, and that is, I believe that is Friday. Let me make sure. Yes, that is Friday when you get the first acceleration. You were trading at 128.30 at that point. We make it all the way up yesterday to a high of 131.10, right? So look at the volatility here. We've almost backed off a full point from the highs already at 130.17. You're technically down 10 points on the session right now on the tenure at 130.16. And we got to jump over to the volatility index this morning. The VIX. Currently trading at 23.55. You see the spike since Thanksgiving. We've been oscillating between about the lower boundary line, give it 22 or 24, up to all the way to a high of 28.99 for the Friday after Thanksgiving on the VIX. Uh, and this morning pulling back a bit, but still some elevated levels. Going to be an interesting open in terms of where we open. Jumping into the news of the morning, uh, stocks tumble as Powell's pivot boosts hike wagers markets wrap is as they put it bottom line you had chairman powell talking about uh doing away with the word transitory yesterday quite a statement from the fed chairman seems like this is the first indication that he is starting the public messaging campaign regarding uh, a faster taper and faster inflation hikes powell's pivot on inflation turns the trader pandemic playbook on its head uh things are changing folks uh, there was a lot of estimation uh, expectations that maybe Chairman Powell would 
sound guarded, sound cautious, as he usually does, dealing with a new variant out there. Uh, but no, that was not the case at all, as what ended up happening, as he said, inflation is here. Uh, that may cause us to raise interest rates, increase the taper pace that we have going on. Uh, not what you may have expected if you were really so worried about growth and the new variant coming in to hit the economy. So interesting as that plays out. What we also have this morning giving stocks a lift is we got private payrolls posting a better than expected growth of 534,000 in November. Uh, market was looking for 506. So this ahead of the number that we get on Friday for non-farm payrolls for the month of November. Leisure and hospitality saw a gain of 136,000. Uh, services sector big time. That's what you're looking for. 424,000 in the services sector. Companies with 500 or more added 277,000 for the month. Growth especially strong in those with 1,000 or more workers contributing 234,000 employees of the 534,000 total. Uh, big companies adding in a big way. Unfortunately, you may see it that small companies are the ones that are going to come out of here and suffer the most. We've already seen it, right, over the last year and a half. Uh, but yes, that headline number 534, Mark was looking at 506, the biggest companies they're adding in the service sector, putting up 424,000 jobs, that number out this morning. Uh, and with that, let's jump around to some of the stocks. Uh, let's start it off with the FANG stocks. All right, we'll jump over to the NASDAQ 100, up 208 points right now. You're trading at 16,355. NASDAQ 100, been probably the strongest indice uh, of the four during this little pullback since Thanksgiving Day, we were up at 16,767. You're talking about all-time highs as recently as November 22nd. Uh, today's the first day of December, folks, right near those all-time highs. Now, we jump around. We'll start it off with Apple. Apple shares yesterday, I mean, remarkable action going on in Apple. You close it, 165.30. We're going to blow away all-time highs this morning up to almost 168 on Apple. You hear that? Almost 168, 167.71. Apple's going to hire, open higher this morning. Amazon has some news of their own. They're doing a deal with Goldman Sachs, I believe, uh, combining forces to offer some services on the cloud for the financial for their financial platform. I'll bring that up in a moment. But Amazon trading higher by about 53 bucks. Uh, Amazon behaving okay, you could say, during this pullback. Still well off the highs that they had of about 37. What are we talking about? 37 and change, right? What were we up to recently? 30. 762. We're going to open at 3560 this morning for Amazon. We jump to Microsoft, MSFT. We're about $20 off the high. You're going to open this morning, though. Check out the pop. $5 almost to the higher on Microsoft. You close it at 330. We got a bid ask of 335. Check out the 15 minute action on Microsoft there. You pop right on that four o'clock number. You had the markets bounce a little bit. We even right after the close yesterday, there's the sell-off, of course, with Microsoft and the market having to do with Chairman Powell intraday. Uh, we jump over to Google shares. Google right now from 2849, we're trading up a bit. I mean, you see all the accelerations on these tech stocks, man. Continued strength in a big way. Google looking to open up about $35 to $40 higher this morning as well. We jump to Facebook shares. Facebook shares up about four or five bucks. Let's jump over to Twitter and see how they're handling a new CEO in that role. You see the volatility on Monday. We dive down to a low of 43 on Tuesday, back up to about $45 and change for Twitter shares. All right, folks, we got the S&Ps up 55 points. We're going to be coming back talking to our man Kevin Hinks from T. The Ameritrade, Thinkorswim, Fast Market. Check out their program every day at noon Eastern time, live on Tiger TV, folks. Uh, we'll be coming back. We'll be talking to Kevin Hicks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Checking in on the markets. We got the S&Ps up about 56 points right now. I'm going to jump over to a story I found. Uh, and you know what? Before we do, folks, it's a beautiful thing. We got our man Kevin Hicks on the line. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time. Kevin Hicks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network on Fast Market. They break down the day's action. They talk about hypothetical trade setups, talking about defined risk in this option market. Uh, when we get the S&Ps jumping 1% to 2% a day and the VIX above 24, folks, you want to understand what's going on in that option market. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, whiplash alert for traders out there today, Tommy. I mean, this market, brace yourself, because it's moving all over the place. And, you know, today's no different, and this should get interesting. Uh, we got some good economic data this morning with the ADP payrolls. Jerome Powell is speaking again. Let's see if he tempers some of his statements from yesterday. Remember, he was, you know, Tommy, as you know, we hang on – just about every word the Fed chair says. And yesterday he was probably as hawkish as I've ever heard him. And so uh, for him to do that, let's see what he says today in day two of his testimony. See if he softens at all, because uh, yesterday was pretty hawkish. And the market seems to think, you know, we, we still have a 10 year at 147, but that was pretty hawkish in terms of accelerating the taper, you know. Remember now, he didn't say he's going to accelerate the taper. He said he's going to talk about it at the next meeting, which comes up in mid-December. So pretty interesting turn of events here this morning, Tommy. Man, Kevin, you know, I was thinking this morning we were getting ready for you to come on the program, and I said a lot has changed uh, since – I last talked to you 24 hours ago, man, because we were just dealing with whether it was the variant concerns or whatever was going on. I, I get off the program, Kevin, at about 10 o'clock. Uh, I'm in beautiful Isla Morada, Florida this week in a little uh, little vacation, staycation, workcation, you know, while we're here. But my dad's in the house as well, so I'm in there chatting. And he tells me what Powell just said. And we both say, oh, that, that, seems, that seems like some pretty strong language, right? And then the, yes. I say to him, and just like that, the S&Ps dropped 40 points. And he thought I was joking. And about 12 seconds later, he said, I, I think you. And I said, yeah, that's the, the S&Ps dropped 40. You know, and we were just sitting there watching the market. So pretty pretty interesting wording. Uh, and, and it will be interesting the second day, man, because 
Is he going to, if he softens it a little, Kevin, is he playing a little bit of like good cop, bad cop, where he's bad cop yesterday, he's going to be good cop today, right, and come back to the market? Or is he going to be um, reiterate what he said, which, man, those are some strong words because of what they carry with the stimulus along the way. Uh, with that in mind, like you said, we still have a market, Kevin. I thought, uh, you know, I was searching out headlines this morning, and I saw a headline that was attributed to Jim Cramer, and it and it spoke to saying there's value maybe in the sell-off yesterday. It might be too late to sell. And I said to myself, too late to sell. We're so close to these highs. How do you look at something like that? Like even Apple yesterday, Kevin, if we could talk about you have Apple trading to new all-time highs yesterday. And sometimes you hear sentiment that it's like too late to sell in this market. Where do you go when you look at a company like Apple pushing almost 170 in the resilience of this market, even as we get a sell-off of about 3% off the highs? Well, Tommy, that's a pretty good segue because Apple will lead off today's show. Love we'll, it. We'll, we'll talk about it and discuss it and figure out how to trade it. And really the topic is, what the heck is going on with Apple? How in a, <laughs> in a soft market where three of the four major indices are have Apple in them, how did that stock manage to rally so strongly in a down market? Because let's face it, with futures – and the pressure that they put on individual names that are in that group, it's very hard for a stock like that to rally on a day like this. But, wow, that was impressive. And that's why we'll cover it today, Tommy, in the first segment of today's show. I love it, man. You read in my mind uh, and you jump over in terms of Apple, Kevin, because I have the same questions, man. That's why, you know, I'm always hitting you up with what I'm thinking about, getting your take on the markets. Apple, 16.5 billion shares, 16.406. I'm over in the Analyze tab and the Fundamentals and the Thinkorswim platform. 16.4 billion shares, outstanding. I mean, remarkable this morning alone, Kevin. That stock is up more than $2. You're talking about $32 plus billion it's going to add in market cap. That's after the close yesterday. Let alone that yesterday, Kevin, we were trading at almost coming at about 8.30 in the morning of 158. So you're talking about adding almost $9, Kevin, in a stock with 16.5 billion shares. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. And we'll, we'll let you guys uh, break down the action coming up at 12 o'clock. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the conversation, the education as always. We'll be tuning in at 12 o'clock today for the conversation and for that Apple take as well, man. You have a great day. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. You too, Kevin. Folks, you heard it there. Apple, I mean, remarkable. When I pulled that up, I had the same questions myself, right? Trading from 158. And think about that. Think about that Apple yesterday, from yesterday's open, added $140 billion in market capitalization versus where it was yesterday. And I think adding a little personal bias, okay, that it speaks to what Kevin was talking about there that you know they are the biggest company out there people are looking for an area of somewhat safety the amount of cash that company has on a yearly basis is going to provide them the strength to overcome whatever volatility in the short term this market may experience uh i'm very bullish amazon on its own right but they come to mind in the same way uh and they've been pretty resilient if you back things up to friday's action amazon is trading at 3562 you back it up to wednesday prior to thanksgiving we closed out the action of about 3578 so basically right in line with where you were now Microsoft you know you can almost lump them all together Microsoft not quite the same as Apple quite a sell-off but man you almost got it all back as of this morning we're giving back some of that right now but Microsoft's up about four dollars uh, and you are seeing some of the biggest companies out there folks and my take would be is that this is a very short-term uh, volatility spike that could be a short-term pullback as in if the variant causes some travel restrictions which it already is doing uh, internationally in Europe uh, potentially in the US as well that is going to cause some economic pullback but in the long run this is nothing like when you're talking about you know 18 months ago going back to March of 2020 nothing like it at all now for some context there I referenced what I was talking about with uh, our man Kevin Hanks and I had to pull up the headline folks uh, and I don't watch Kramer it's entertaining at times I'm sure he has some good information out there occasionally but the headline just made me chuckle Kramer suggests putting some cash to work after Tuesday's decline. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, here's the thing. I can completely agree with this. It might make sense to put some cash to work after Tuesday's decline. Uh, in the long term, it may be a buying opportunity. But the fact that you think it's too late to sell, folks, if it if, if selling is necessary, it it 
will not be too late to sell. It may not be too late to sell. Just putting that sentiment out there, you have to consider the context, folks, of let's just look at what a chart of the S&P looks like. And here we are, and you have the most notable TV pundits out there in the financial arena saying that it's too late to sell. That's a scary phenomenon, folks. Okay, You're basically sitting at almost to the tick all-time highs. Yes, you're 120 points off in the S&P. That's not to the tick, okay? <clears throat> but this chart goes back to the beginning of 2020, folks. We're not even two years out. You started 2020 at 3,200. We're trading 1,400 points above there. You started 2021 at 36 and change, 3,700 basically. We're 900 points above where we're at starting the year after the run we had during COVID, after a low of 2,174. And you have people telling you that it might be too late to sell. Now, I, I appreciated Fletcher. They're talking, he's talking about stocks that are 30 to 40% uh, off the highs, not the indices. That would make more sense. But boy, these indices trade off. Those stocks are going to get hit too. And that's the thing to think about. You know, if you're going into, like I'll even be more exaggerated, right? A Zoom at 211, you get a big market sell-off. Zoom's going to sell off as well. Uh, we'll be right back with the open, folks. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S and P's up 54 points. Nasdaq 100 up about 190. Dow up 320. Russell up about two percent, up 44 points. We jump to crude. Crude up two dollars and eleven cents right now, trading at 68.26. We jump over to that gold contract this morning. Gold contract up about twelve dollars, trading at 17.88. And let's jump over to the VIX with the markets open. We got the volatility index sitting at 23.63. Not back quite back to the lows we had on Monday, but actually just under the lows we had at the flash. Uh, sell off when you had yesterday morning. We reached the low in the VIX, uh, excuse me, the acceleration before the market really sold off there. We had a VIX of about 24. So kind of just right at those levels. All right, let's jump around to what else we have going on. Salesforce out with their numbers last night, disappointing the market. You trade down to 261. We do have some Salesforce in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. You're popping this morning off those lows up to 274. You're still down about 3.7% on this equity. This equity really selling off yesterday as well. We were at 299, so you get back almost 40 bucks from where we were at 10 a.m. yesterday to where we were when they came out with their numbers after the bell. For some context on the daily, Breaking below that channel line, not what you'd want to see. You're up to 311, all-time highs. You've pulled back now to 273, getting into the Salesforce numbers. So they miss on their guidance. Uh, never want to see that. Uh, I am a bull on Salesforce, though, that's for sure. Uh, earnings per share for December quarter are going to be between 72 and 73 cents, and that's where market was looking for 80 one cents for that quarter. In terms of the qu quarter they just reported, they beat a buck twenty-seven versus ninety-two cents. Revenue six point eight six versus six point eight. Sales up twenty-seven percent from five point four two billion in the same period a year earlier. The company expects between seven point two two and seven point two three billion in the fifth quarter, raising its previous guidance and coming in on par. But the earnings are where they missed. Seventy-two to seventy-three cents. Market was looking for eighty-one. Uh, sales Cloud, the company's core product that salespeople use, reported $1.54 billion in sales, up 17%. Um, their service cloud business up over 20%, just staggering numbers in a big way. Uh, but market making them pay for a little bit of a profitability miss this morning. And uh, yeah, we're down about 4.6% right now on Salesforce. All right, and jump back to the S&Ps so you can see, giving back a little bit of the action, S&Ps up about 45 points. We were up about 56 to 58 coming in. You're still popping 1% uh, in this market. And just back to that Kramer piece real quick, folks, because I had to point out, because, you know, this is the CNBC article. He airs on CNBC. This is the headline that they're getting looks for, right, putting some cash to work. He specifically talks about an S&P um, index fund. Given that it's a good idea to keep some money in an S&P index fund for your retirement, you have my blessing tomorrow morning to commit some capital, saying, uh, after the S&P fell 1.9%, Dow dropped one8 too early to buy hand over fist. He talks about putting a quarter of his uh, money at play. And I'm not saying that's a bad idea, folks, especially um, now, I would go the other way, like Fletch was saying. You know, you're talking about individual equities that have just been punished. I talk about Disney. We have Disney in my newsletter, folks. Disney is one that I would say is, you know, an area that you should begin thinking about buying. And I would consider it too late to selling. I do have a stop in there. But at this point, you are back to levels that you've almost seen. Talking about May of 2019, Disney pulling back from 203 to 146. Quite a different story when you say that you do a show and talking about an S&P index fund saying invest the quarter of your free cash when you're trading at 4610. The market's at 4740. Um, there may be better buying opportunities in this market if you think this is the buying opportunity then that is not a pullback, folks. You know, I mean, you go from just the run we had last November when we started getting the vaccine numbers, okay? And that's starting from a price point of 3,200, not a price point of 2,100, okay? You're talking about a 382 retracement that's a solid, what are we, 440 points below, and that's a 382, and that's an area that we chopped around in from April to June, and again, we started the year off, folks, at 3,700. That's talking about only trading back to potentially 4,100. Okay, that's still, what, a 12% acceleration for the year. Even if you get that pullback, the S&P would be up 12% for this calendar year, let alone the returns we had in 2020 after trading down to 2,174. Just keep that in mind as you hear that, because if that's the real sentiment that it's too late to sell uh, across the board and people should be thinking of adding to their index funds, 
if you're a super long-term investor, yes, any pullback you could rationalize, you can gain some edge on the market as in you're buying 1% to 2% below where it was at just a day prior. But boy, be aware of the pullbacks that are possible and keeping some cash dry for the possibility of that is something I would consider, folks, when you're sitting basically at all-time highs. Okay, jumping around to some of the equities that are making moves this morning. We talked about Salesforce. You have Hewlett Packard Enterprises. They're down a bit pre-market. We'll jump over to see where they are as the market opens. Revenue, just a miss of 7.35 versus 7.38. They have a profit, though, that was 4% above. HPE is their symbol. <coughs> Excuse me, down about 2.4% uh, so far for Hewlett Packard Enterprises. Let's see. I wanted to get into, yeah, Goldman Sachs, Amazon. So they were both higher this morning. We'll see how they open. Uh, CNBC wrote it, reported that Goldman Sachs is unveiling a cloud service for Wall Street trading firms backed by AWS. Uh, the new service is called GS Financial Cloud for Data with Amazon Web Services. Goldman was up almost a percent. Amazon was up 1.2 percent. Amazon shares up a percent right now to open. And Goldman Sachs shares up 1.4 percent. We put things on a little bit shorter term time frame to see the volatility on that. Goldman Sachs up this morning with Amazon on that news. Lennar was up after an upgrade from Goldman. Goldman says demand for new homes remain high. It remains high in the country. LEN is their symbol. Lennar up 2.3%, giving back some of the gains on the open, though. Uh, let's see. Krispy Kreme. Uh, they are a little bit lower after they get a downgrade. DoorDash is higher after Gordon Haskett initiated a uh, upgrade of the stock with a buy from a hold. The Omicron variant could spark a rebound for the food delivery. I don't know if I see that happening, folks. You know, you start going, I guess, globally, but DoorDash, I mean, they did just make an acquisition to do that. They're up 2% on that news. But I don't know if I see it drastically reducing the amount that we are, if you're already comfortable eating outdoors in some, um, as a restaurant in some capacity, I'm not sure that's going to change that behavior, the new variant. Um, either you're probably vaccinated, you may get your booster, you may feel comfortable, you, maybe you're dining outside, maybe you're going to restaurants occasionally you're comfortable with, uh, but I don't see, or, or you're not and you're comfortable anyway, I don't see it changing behaviors to that degree. Nonetheless, they're getting an upgrade on possibly more delivery. Uber share is up 2.3%, probably on a similar deal going on on Uber as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's jump over to Tesla. Our man Elon Musk continuing the run up about 2%, 1166. Remarkable Tesla. I mean, Tesla's almost clawed back all the losses they got from the CEO selling, uh, what is that, uh, a 10-figure sale in terms of you're talking about 10 digits, $10 billion, you're at 1167, uh, basically near the higher end of the consolidation towards the, the the highs of 1243 for Tesla shares. And we jump around to what we got going on the airlines as we got a little bit of a pop as well. American up 2% right now. You got Delta shares up about 2% as well. We jump to the cruise ships, Carnival up 2.7. These stocks have been pummels. Norwegian up 3% and we'll jump to the cannabis stocks. Canopy continuing the slide, 1064. <coughs> Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back with our man, Teddy Kegstad, talking a little Forex, talking a little crude. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Thank you. Uh, welcome back, folks. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad, as we do every Wednesday at 40 past the hour from forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So last Wednesday, Teddy, I was talking to you. You were on your beautiful balcony with the foliage. Uh, and this week, I'm on the balcony, man, talking to you for some beautiful backgrounds. <laughs> but quite a difference right? in the markets, man. So, uh, we have a lot to digest in terms of Friday, the action, of mm -hmm. course, and then this week and yesterday's action with Chairman Powell. Where do you want to kick things off? Well, what a difference a week makes, huh? You know, um, well, why don't, we, why don't we start with the end? So, okay. And, uh, we can tie it all together. So when we spoke last week on on Wednesday, I was telling all your viewers, stay away from holiday markets. Probably good advice for most people after what happened. <laughs> so, Remarkable, um, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, well, now it's kind of interesting. You know, Thursday was the holiday, obviously, and then or, or Thursday night into Friday was where everything happened. So let's digest what really happened. Now, obviously, they were hot, thin holiday markets, okay? We had a huge move in the interest rate market. Obviously, we had a $10 sell-off in oil. So what did that do? It knocked around, well, for one, the interest rate move impacts the dollar to begin with. Then the oil move also shook up all the, you know, remember we had the oil trade on for like the yen, the Canada, and certain uh, uh, different currency crosses. All of those were impacted huge. I mean, you can tell by the chart in the yen. I mean, it was kind of funny because Thursday night I had a short-term sell signal and we were right below my 116 target you know so i'm thinking well you know what it's a holiday i'm just going to liquidate my longs and just put a couple shorts on and just risk the high i'm like it's a low risk sell and we're right below my target right wake up the next day catch a three dollar move whoa what was that all about you know <laughs> so and uh so th these moves don't happen you know typically yeah. unless there's like news you know this was a holiday exacerbated move on a thin market short hours in the u.s and what have you going into a weekend now, obviously, Monday and Tuesday was the digestion period where we're at right now. You know, now oil, you know, it's the it's the COVID scare. That's what's going on right now. You know, so we haven't had, you know, if we start to see lockdowns in the U.S., obviously, and keep on pushing around the world. I mean, Germany and Austria are not looking good right now. You know, yeah. so that's where we, we are definitely having the COVID trade back on the table. 
But I would be leery of this oil sell-off. Now, I know I've been a bull calling for $100, you know, and it's not about right or wrong here. It's about what's the reality of things. Um, unless we are going to have a slowdown in pace with everything, especially globally, oil is just taking a nick. This is, this is a knee-jerk reaction to fear, you know. So kind of like what would happen after months of what was going on during the COVID uh, trend when we, were buying, when we were trading lower and stuff like that. Um, the fact is that supplies of oil are not – Oil is not running out. Oil is just not getting to where it needs to go. So the question of demand is there, you know. So I think that's what you're really seeing with the yen, you know, especially for as far as most of the currencies. And let's start with that one. So nice. we had a nice correction, okay. We're coming off of multi-month highs. <laughs> you know, a, a two, three-day sell-off does not a bear market make, you know. And especially with the, with the extent of the range that happened over Friday and even the volatility on Monday and Tuesday. You know, so at these levels, here's what I'm looking at. You know, you look at the dollar index, okay? That peaked, obviously, last week going into the holiday. It's coming off a high, you know? So I'm looking at all of these moves right now as a correction, not as a trend changer or anything like that, because what's changed in the world? Nothing, you know, except for the fear factor, you know? So I think that's what we're, we're trading on right now. Um, I'm still bullish. The, the U.S. dollar yen overall, I think now is a good buying area long term. I mean, unless oil continues to get a slide, but I don't really see oil getting below 60 bucks a barrel, let alone into the 50s anytime soon. You know, and even if it does, I, I think that'll be an, an exacerbated spike and you'll have a balloon underwater rally. So I'd be very careful getting caught with these. What I'm saying are corrections right now. I think your counter trend trades. You have to view it as that and, and, and manage it like that as well. Yeah, I love the take, man. And even on 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 crude, which is remarkable. I was just playing with some Fibonacci numbers, uh, Teddy. And if you take mm -hmm. the run, it's a remarkable run. And not even going from the COVID lows, you know, where it was down at six bucks or negative uh, prices. After you consolidated, when you take the price where you go from basically the breakout of the markets in November of 2020, you pull up a 382, mm -hmm. folks, of that entire run. Okay, and that run starts at $35, basically, or even lower, 33.64. I have on my chart mm -hmm. up to 84. We've just touched Teddy a 3A2 retracement, which is a pretty mm -hmm. standard retracement um, on that pullback that we had from 84 bucks, and it's a quick pullback. Right. Uh, I agree, back to 68. But it's important for that context. Sometimes I'm not. I don't mm -hmm. know if you heard the start of the program. I'm kind of trying to bring listeners into the same thing when you hear mm -hmm. pundits like Kramer saying, you know, it's too late to sell, no matter what you're talking about. And I'm saying, <laughs> folks, you got to look at a long-term chart here and see where we've right. come, see where we've gone. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't. I wouldn't allow even a sentiment like that to come in my head teddy right like i'm not selling I'm times, you, but, 100%. but you start thinking it's too late to sell when you almost you have the biggest company in the world at all-time high is apple remarkable right. resilience you have the s p's within two or three percent you know i don't know the exact number it's two or three percent mm -hmm. you know basically as we chop around here that's one day's move teddy you know on, right. on the market action so right. in, in the crude sentiment i kind of agree that listen if you don't think a 38 percent retracement is capable when we were at negative prices up to over 80 dollars a barrel basically <laughs> yeah of course a, a pullback uh it's important folks um, sure. okay so good take on the end where what other currencies are you looking at this week teddy with everything else that's kind of in play uh i would i would definitely watch out for the pound you know that like we saw it we had i had a buy signal in the euro a couple of days ago so that's that's why i think this is a correction when you when you look at the dollar index the major currencies are the euro and the pound the euro obviously has set a short-term bottom it has is trying to have a nice little correction the pound is bobbling off the lows. Like it looks like it wants to bottom, but it also looks like it wants to slam the lows again. You know, now I am short term bullish the pound, you know, um, not very bullish, but I can see a nice little correction over the next. I think the dollar is going to be under pressure for the next week or so, you know, unless we have a big turnaround in oil and a big sell off in rates. Now, you mentioned Powell. We heard something out of his mouth now as over the past couple of days that we haven't heard yet. Inflation is here to stay. That's huge. You know, by, by the Fed yeah. taking that stance, that means now they're going to do or lean towards, which I think is always the wrong thing in an inflationary environment, is to raise interest rates. Of course, you can't cut rates because there's nowhere you can go anymore, you know. Yeah. So um, and I think you have to watch the bonds like the, the activity we've had in the Forex market. You had a three. This is where we're especially going into Thursday, you know, after we spoke on Wednesday. You had a $3 move into 30-year Treasury bonds 
on a holiday market off of no news, <laughs> a rally. OK, so that's where you that right there gives you weakness in the dollar that set us up for weakness. Then you had the sell off of ten dollars in the oil market on a Friday holiday market. See, when you yeah. combine that level of of market action in those two variables, which the interest rate trade is always on the, t on, the on the table for the like, Forex markets. The oil trade, we know we've been talking about. It's been back on for a couple months. It's there. So when you have that level of movement, you know what I'm saying? It's sure I to do. shake up the other ones. So now, if, as long as, and like I'm saying, as long as in the short run, oil stabilizes kind of where it's at, you don't see an interest rate move, then I think you're going to see a bounce in the pound. So you get a rally in the pound is very likely. Um, to see a continuation in the euro, very likely, but not very extended. Um, the U.S. dollar Swiss is the one where I think you're going to get the most. Teddy, hang reaction. with us for one second, all sure. right? Because we're going to break. Okay. We'll be right back. We'll be right back, folks. Okay. As an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 48 points right now. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. And, Teddy, I just didn't want you to have to rush through that because I like the way you were working through each one towards the end there, just talking about whether it was, you know, the crude, the pullback, the the Forex markets, how they were reacting. If you could just continue with what you were saying there. So the Swiss, like the end, was, was one that got batted down pretty hard. Um, I think it's an overdone break, but I still think it's, it's prodding the lows right now. And, and, like, we have the oil numbers coming out today. Oil's up a little bit right now on the day. That's what's really dictating these trades as far as, like I said, I think it's a correction. So I think you're going to still see the U.S. dollar Swiss 
tread on support for the next couple of sessions or so. Um, and then we get to, we already spoke about the yen. Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, those are two that are just in the gutter. I would be very careful with any bounce in those markets, period, right now, especially with the yes. lockdowns um, in Australia. Um, yeah. U.S. dollar, Canada, that's a touchy trade. I, it's It's been pressuring resistance right now, and, and I think a lot of that has to do with, 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 the, with the current trend of what happened over the past couple sessions, you know. I'd be very cautious buying the U.S. dollar, Canada, right now. That's a very touchy one. It's in the middle of an area where long term, it's a bear still. It's in an upside correction. And there's just too many variables there. It's hard to lock in a trend on that one. But the thing I think you really need to key off of is that right now, all these markets are in a short term correction, or at least you should view it as a short term correction and not a trend change. Never try and pick a top. OK, that's important. And especially with the way the bonds and the oil market have moved these markets over the past week. If you start to see a big sell-off in the 30-year and the 10-year bond. And if you see oil get another five, six dollars higher back up into the 70, mid-70s or something like that, we're back on the regular trade where we were a week and a half ago, meaning that the dollar bulls will come raging back. So and markets go, tend to go out like they come in. So you've had an aggressive sell-off in the US dollar yen, an aggressive sell-off in the US dollar Swiss. Don't think that if those other markets turn that we're not going to see the yen back up at 115. I mean, you don't I have a it, $3 sell-off in the, in, in the yen on a holiday, you know? It's No, it, I love the way you walk it through it, man, understanding how the commodities are driving the currencies, are driving the action. Well, Teddy, we appreciate the update, man. We look forward to talking to you next Thanks. week. All okay, right. have you a great have one, man. Too. Take care. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. We got Basil live at 10. We got our man Larry live at 11. Live programming all day, folks. We'll be right back.